Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. It's been a while. Yep, I haven't put up a video in a little bit and uh, been working on other stuff other than guitars plus working on multiple guitars at the same time. I've got bodies hanging right now that are drying. Uh, one of them, including a neck, is in its final clear coat. That I can start working on either over the weekend or today if I wanted to. This one here is the Epiphone Les Paul 100 minus a neck because I ended up putting a different neck with this body. Now, a lot of people have been asking me to do another Les Paul style body with a V neck on it, you know, the V headstock shape. And I kind of like the way, personally like the way it looks a lot better than the Epiphone style wannabe or trying to be Gibson shaped, whatever you want to call it, headstock. This one here had the older, um, older style headstock on there compared to what the newer ones are more closer to looking like the Gibson than the old Epiphone, which I'd rather have the Gibson look headstock than the older Epiphone. And whatever, it just you know, personal preference basically is what it is. Anyways, so you can kind of see here, here I went with the golden green. This is a candy apple green over silver and with a black diamond base coat that is underneath everything. And underneath that is basically the old paint that this guitar was sprayed with. And the reason why I left it is because wet sanding it down and making sure everything is flat um make sure everything is contoured the way it's supposed to so you don't have any wavy spots or anything that uh looks a little bit funny when you bend it with the light x as a primer also as a filler so with this being a mahogany body i don't have to put any grain filler in, in it or anything else by using the original paint that was on this thing as a primer. Works out really good. As long as you don't have any major chips or, or really, really, really deep scratches that go through the clear coat into the finish, into the wood, that you can use a scratch filler to kind of fix that. Or you can even use some type of CA glue to even fix that as well. Um, or you can try Timber Mate which is for mahogany it's a grain filler and you can use that to kind of fill in the scratch not so much dense because the grain filler um isn't a bondo it's not as hard as a bondo and it kind of chips away pretty easily so i've got some of it right here and for like necks or bodies that have a lot of wood grain showing on it and I have used it. I've used it as you can kind of see. I've used this a lot and but I've also had this for a long time. <sighs> mix a little bit of water, take some of it out, mix a little bit of water in it, turn it into a mud and start spreading it around on the bare wood. Wait for it to dry, sand it smooth and you're ready to prime or do a some type of a uh, sanding sealer. I use Mohawk sanding sealer. It works really, really good. The only problem with it is it's a lacquer, and you really have to wait for it to uh, flash off pretty good before you decide to start painting over it. Because it is a lacquer, it does feel like it dries faster, but it's not really drying faster. It's still kind of gassing off. And once you seal that in, you end up with problems. And if you start clear coating on it before you end up, uh, before that sanding sealer gasses off, the clear coat starts to milk, get milky in certain spots where it didn't quite gas off very well. So it's kind of not a good thing to go into the next steps right away. So right here you can see I went with the Candy Apple Green, Gold Hardware, Gold Electronics. These are Wilkinson's pickups. They're splittable or you can do uh, reverse the polarity on it. You can do whatever you want. I've had these things. They're brand new. I bought them for a guitar a long time ago and I ended up going with P90s instead. And this is going to get a roller bridge on it, standard 2 -tomatic. I changed out my idea as far as doing the 
one volume, one three-way switch. So I decided to give it a single tone and two volumes. The volumes are going to be a push and pull volumes because I'm going to split these pickups. I thought about maybe, well, let's split the neck pickup instead of the humbucker on the bridge position. I was thinking about it, I was like, you know, I want to do both. This way you get more of a variety of a tone if you're looking for it. Um, I did shield everything that's on and they are linked together. This way there's not going to be any type of an issue where um, noise is going to get entered into this mix somewhere. If it is, it should be kind of minor. But a lot of people say, why are you shielding it? It's a humbucker. Humbuckers kind of shield you already from the hum. Not if you turn it into a single coil, it doesn't. You still get a little bit of a buzzing going on. So, she only just kind of extra insurance. So, I went through my stash of parts and I only found one volume that is a push and pull. So, I got parts coming tomorrow and I can put dual push and pulls on this thing. I do have some issues that I had to kind of correct. So, because the Wilkinson pickups have a more wires and a bigger harness going to them, there wasn't enough uh, room in the drilled out tunnel that was going to the control cavity. So I had to pull out my super big and uh, I got two different sizes of these guys. So I went with the bigger one and started drilling away from the pickup cavity into the control cavity. Well, the problem with doing so is I didn't stop and ended up hitting right here. So yeah, right where you see this little white spot. That's right there is filled in with CA glue. It is like completely smooth. I sanded it down, smooth to the touch. I still have the nice straight line over here to where the cover plate will go on here with no issues, no problems whatsoever. One of the things that I need to do with a lot of these guitars when I get them is to go over them with a router, all right? If I want to have a nice, smooth, and real professional look as far as how the shielding tape is put in, um, you're not going to get it when the cavity is all lumpy and bumpy with finish and, and this, that, and the other, whatever, they, however they routed it out and their shitty job as far as doing it. Um, so I think like what I'm gonna start doing is routing out the cavities over here myself, including the pickup. So when I do do a doo-doo, when I do put the shielding tape in here, it lays out smooth, doesn't get all wrinkly and crappy and shit like that. It just, just looks terrible to me. I mean, it's not professional. And I won't even consider this uh, to be a professional job as far as how this looks. Even though it's covered, nobody sees it, as long as it's not moving, going anywhere, or interfering with anything, it's doing its job. I know, but I'm picky like that. And you know me, if I don't like it, I redo it. But so far, I'm not going to redo any of these because I have this finish on here. So I sanded down the whole back of this, and the reason why is because of this little spot. Now, I still have to carve this spot down a little bit because of the factors, like anytime you're adding a finish on top of something, and this glue, the CA glue, is basically smooth right over, you don't feel it, it doesn't like have a hump to it, doesn't have a dip to it, it's just even with the body itself. The problem with that is, is when you start putting paint on top of that, that's going to change and now you're going to have a little bit of a bump here and then when you go ahead and start putting the clear on top of that you're going to have more of a bump and now there is what they call feathering in all right so what i need to do is i need to kind of like dip this in so i'll take a piece of 800 grit sandpaper and kind of dip it in a little bit i kind of know by feel how much to dip it in to where um Number one, it's not going to look funny when it's clear coated. Number two, it's going to come out smooth after it's clear coated, like it's all blended it in and there's no issue. So this little spot right here is going to turn into an area this wide that I have to touch up and blend in just for that little spot there. So what I need to do is I need to carve this down a little bit 
and then I need to, when I get the paint, because I don't have it right now, when I get the black diamond, lightly dust inside there, find a piece of the lace that matches this area, which is not that big of a deal, and put it on top of there, dust the silver, and then hit it with the green, which is going to come out to about here, and then sand that down a little bit, just so I don't have any edges and I don't feel the difference between adding the paint. This is why I need to kind of knock this down a little bit more over here and then blend it in with sanding and buffing to where that would be completely gone and you wouldn't even notice it's there. So this has got a nice smooth finish to it. So when I do my buff, buffing and blending, all of this is going to get blended and buffed in together with that corner. Not a problem with covering this up. I will just use the old cover and put that back on. Fits on there with no problems. And that way I won't get any rubbing compound or anything inside there. Same thing with this. Where it switches, it's already wired. I got all my wires here. I got my tone control with an orange cap on it. So she's ready to go as far as just waiting for parts and getting things finally, final assembly going. Strung up, plugged in, and tested. So right now I have a couple other things I need to do. And I want to put this off to the side. And I got a package from Diamond Cut Graphics. My buddy Jeff Lee. He's like, anytime I need something, we discuss what uh, I need to do and how I'm going to do it. And he pulls through as far as what I've got going on with this. Now, I do have to be careful because I don't know where this is. Okay, he put some cardboard inside there. Just to protect it a lot better so I can get rid of that and let's see how he did this because I really am interested what he did and how he did it oh yeah oh he did it for me holy shit and he did a nice job too so what I needed was for the Squire Jaguar base because I'm going to redo the headstock. I'm going to lose the Squire and the logo that's on there with the Jaguar base. He even made me the little fender emblems. So he sent me two of everything here, I believe. Well, one of these and two of these. So how this is supposed to work out, I believe you know you have the curve in the headstock so I got the Squire logo the Jaguar base and I think it says by Fender someplace on there as well thanks a lot Jeff Lee this is going to work out perfect and it's gonna work out in a way where I can still customize my headstock and do it how I want to do it without because I like the way a headstock matches the body of a guitar it just looks so much better when it's got a nice headstock that matches you know Ibanez does a thing where the body's got a color to it but the headstock is black Gibson on the other hand pulls it off and I kind of like it especially the way they do with some type of a diamond inlay on the center of the uh, headstock or where it says Les Paul or something like that they get away with it they get away with it pretty good but when it comes to other guitars Jackson and stuff like that you have the big Jackson logo on the headstock but then it's just a black background behind it match the body more often with the headstock it looks much better so I've got my lace I believe this is the lace for the Squire base, and I got some plans on how I'm doing this, and I'm going with a uh, a candy orange, kind of like an infernal orange with this one, and I believe this is it. I hope so. It's hard to see when it's in a bag. Oh yeah, there you go. 
All right, so this lace has got a interesting pattern to it. Nope, it's still folded in, so you're getting double the view, I believe. No, oh, that's it. All right. Wait, it's still folded in. There you go. All right. That's much better. So now you get the more of an idea of what this looks like. This is going to go onto the body of the Jaguar base, and this is going to be wrapped around the top, the back, um, the sides, the bottom. In the center, it's going to have something else I have in mind. But this is going to look awesome with the silver on top of the black. On top of that will be the candy orange. That's going to look pretty fucking sharp. At least I think so. It's like doing a custom paint job without having to do a custom paint job. And my father used to do this years ago with... This is something that they used to do, uh, I want to say, 60s and 70s. Okay, especially with the low rider vehicles, uh, custom motorcycles, uh, especially on over the tanks and stuff. And it was just something that um, was simple. That back then, instead of having pearl colors, they used a lot of metal flakes. And now that we have pearls and candies the way we have them, uh, especially with them being transparent, you can get away with a better custom paint job. Oh, what do you know? It was a Ziploc bag and I tore it open. So I'm going to add this with my collection of lace that I'll be using. And I need to get into the big box of what I got going on with that. Alright, so here is the big box. And let's get into it because I have some parts inside here that I need for another guitar. And some parts that came with this box for the guitars in this box. And this is a custom guitar that I am entrusted with to do a nice job. One of these days I will sharpen this knife. And take a look at what it is. All right, so I have a Floyd Rose here, which kind of looks like a Floyd Rose special. This goes on what's in this guitar box here. Same thing with these pickups. I got the hardware for it. Some new strap locks. And a pickup that's gonna go on this guitar as well. So that's what I have to do with this guitar, and if you saw in the labels here, it says Jackson. So this is a, almost reminds me of a Floyd Rose Special. Blades look like they're okay, they're not bad, or knives, if you want to call them. So that's going with this. Alright, so we have an overview. see my chips in over there on the side oh this is beautiful really beautiful it's got a little bit of a chip in it on the red so he wants this pickup in the Kramer these are EMG active uh, this is the Jackson bridge Should have detuned it. Here are the parts for the Jackson and the keys. So beautiful fucking job on this. Really love the way this thing looks. I'm gonna do something like this myself. This is not hard to do. I want to do something like it. And I wonder if I have some paint that I could fix that ship there or fill it with some clear so it doesn't ship anymore. 
try to see if what I can mix up that I can fix that for him. But yeah, this thing is really, really nice. Alright, so right here you are looking at one of my Gibson guitars. And this is kind of a personal guitar that is, uh, well, kind of personalized to me with my name on the top of the headstock. This guitar here, I contacted the seller and talked to him, kept in touch with him. They sent pictures of the build. Um, all I wanted was the husk of this guitar to be a certain way. And not kind of like the typical chipson you know build that you know everybody else does so the top on this is a veneer the inlays that are on this thing is not an inlay but it's a decal and how i could tell it's a decal is just by looking at some of the inner lines here i really don't think that this um that this is an actual carved out inlaid the neck that is that you can tell that it's carved and it's these inlays have been put inside here but i changed out everything as far as the electronics goes the hardware goes put actual grover tuners on here you know a bone nut uh i just wanted it for the husk but i wanted the husk to be done in a way that was going to be more better than uh say your standard you know 200 dollar chips and guitar so i did spend a little bit more to have this guitar built a certain way but the quality of it is still towards the chips and side as far as the build goes now these guitars are not sprayed with lacquer it's a polyurethane that they use on here and you could tell it's a polyurethane especially if you start sanding it you can just tell by the way it's sanding how it's sanding and the smell of it okay now one of the things polyurethane shrinks and it's kind of like one of those uh like lacquer after time will start to shrink um it a lot of paints and stuff finishes will shrink in time all right now polyurethane as it cures and dries and stuff like that it kind of shrinks as it's happening and which is kind of good because you can kind of tell and see flaws that are uh, in your clear coat, in your finish, or even what's underneath the clear coat after it shrinks. So when you do your sanding and stuff and you have to fill in and you can kind of spray a little bit heavier in that area to fill in that flaw so you don't see it. So this is no difference. Now, all the chips that I got, none of them are sprayed with lacquer. It's all polyurethane. One of the things about uh, chips is, and it's not really chipson's fault but is the line that you feel where the binding is okay when they cut or scrape the binding clean to get the finish off of it before they do their clear coating now you can see this is not a gloss finish it's kind of like a little bit of semi-gloss to it when they scrape the finish and they put the clear on it well the binding is a little bit down where they scraped it heavily okay but when you get into certain other areas you don't feel that anymore like i feel a little bit right here and a little bit right over here but the rest of it i don't feel where there's a change in height as far as the finished area and the binding areas that is not because of the finish that is on this area here when they did their scraping yeah there's going to be a little bit of a difference when they do their clearing is where they're supposed to make up that difference. So when they clear coated this, the clear coat shrunk. They didn't wet sand it and clear coat it again. That's something that I do, especially when it comes to the binding that is on the neck. Uh, you don't want to feel that when you're playing your guitar. So what they did here was is they scraped it, clear coated it, did not sand it and clear coat it again. It shrunk. It shrunk into the different level and now you have a line that you can feel that's kind of what chips and and i'm going to tell you something gibson does the same fucking thing all right gibson guitars if you feel the binding in the areas the lower quality ones they do the same damn thing i have not noticed that on epiphones because epiphone uses a very thick uh i want to say it's a polyurethane or it's a type of urethane but they use a heavy thing i want to say more of an epoxy sealer than that's what they use on there because it's really thick finish on there 
but Gibson has the same problem. So this one's kind of like personalized to me, so I won't be selling this one. So I will be selling probably my other Chipsons. And each Chipson that I have has all been upgraded, has all been polished, has new frets on them. Electronics are guaranteed to be replaced, including the pots and uh, caps and everything else, also the tuners. So I'm thinking about maybe getting rid of them. They're taking up space. And I have a tendency, like you saw the white chipson that was sitting in the room over here, I have a tendency of grabbing the chipsons and playing around with them when I'm practicing, then uh, grabbing, say, my Gibson or my Ibanez or even my Epiphone, Tommy Thera Epiphone. I mean, it just, because it's there, I know it works, it stays in tune, I grab it and I'll practice with it. But because of that, none of my other guitars get any playtime. So this one I'm going to go back and put it back up on the wall. And uh, yeah, so just something to consider, keep looking at maybe my uh, uh, eBay account if I put up anything because I'm really considering getting rid of the Chipsons so I can have some playtime with the other guitars instead of just messing around with these. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and I will catch up with you later.